The number two Democrat in the House, Jenny Hoyer, House of Representatives, has for years been a pro prolific campaigner on behalf of current and potential members of Congress. It was no surprise then that December found him in Colorado, where the party has hopes of knocking off Republican incumbent Mike Kaufman. Before Donald Trump had ever been inaugurated, local resistance groups began deluging Kaufman's public appearances, pressing him not to appeal the Affordable Care Act, and putting him back on his political heels. Levi Tillman, an author, inventor, former official with the Obama administration's energy department, moved back home to make a run against Kaufman. So, groundwork. Boom, ping, pow. We have progressives putting the fire under Kaufman. That's not centrist Democrats. We have progressives, grassroots, putting the fire under Kaufman. Tillman focused his campaign on clean elections, combating climate change, Medicare for all, free community college, and confronting economic inequality and monopoly power. Money out of politics, oh, get rid of Citizens United, right? Climate change, I like this. I, this is promising. Promising. Okay. Another candidate for the nomination was Jason Crow. Or is Jason Crow? Now, he's a corporate lawyer in the powerhouse Colorado firm Holland and Hart, an Army vet, <clears throat> but seemed like he had the backing of the Democratic establishment. Though it wasn't explicit, November 1st, it became clearer as Crow was named by the Democratic Congressional, the, double, the DCCC, Congressional Campaign Committee, to the party's red to blue list, which the committee specifies is not an endorsement, but does carry symbolic weight. So, obviously, they like Crow. Yeah, they like Crow. Maybe it's because he's not for, uh, you know, Medicare for all. You know, maybe. Yeah. Bridge too far. Community college. You know, it's too much, too much. Incrementalism. Incrementalism. Right? With Hoyer in Denver, Tillman met the minority whip at the Hilton Denver downtown to make the case that the party should stay neutral in the primary and that he had a more plausible path to victory than the same centrism that Kaufman had already been beaten repeatedly. So Kaufman's been able to keep his seat in Colorado, Tillman believes, because Democrats just keep running people that ain't nothing but Republicans in Democratic face. They keep running moderate Republicans against conservative Republicans. And Tillman wanted to plead, wanted to make his case to Steny Hoyer that, hey, I'm better than a Republican, right? Because you're gonna keep you keep running the same types of people. Won't you run people that are vastly different, that are that are, you know, contrast to what they currently have? Why are you running somebody who's just a lukewarm version of it? Hoya, however, has had his his own message he wanted to convey. Tillman should drop out. In a frank and wide-ranging conversation, Hoya laid down the law for Tillman. The decision, Tillman was told, had been made long ago. It wasn't personal, Hoya insisted, and there was nothing uniquely unfair being done to Tillman, he explained. This is how the party does it everywhere. When we say there is corruption in the Democratic Party, they tell us to shut up. When we say the elections are rigged from primaries and beyond, before the primary, it's before, not a vote, nobody's voted. They chose. You didn't get to choose Colorado. Steny Hoyer said this is how they do business. Sort of reminds me a lot of the DNC fraud lawsuit, don't it? Isn't that what the DNC fraud lawsuit said? How, well, they said it. The lawyers for the DNC said it. Remember when I had Donna Brazil on the show and she said? There was, a, there was testimony by the DNC lawyers that said, and I quote, 
We could have voluntarily decided that, look, we're going to go into a back room and smoke cigars and pick candidates that way. That's not the way it was done, but they could have. When we hear, can you imagine like the voters out there, people who worked on these campaigns, who, who donated money, when they hear the DNC lawyers make these claims that they could pick their own candidate, what incentive does that give uh, voters and campaigners and uh, activists a reason to support Democrats? Well, first of all, if any lawyer said that they should be stripped of their responsibility to represent the Democratic Party, uh, that's not the way in which uh, I've seen the party operate. Uh, we open our doors to everyone. Uh, we allow everybody to get a seat at the table. I respect that and I understand it. But that statement I just read you, that was said in the court of law. That's them on the record <laughs> saying... Can you tell me what law firm and who was that who the lawyer? Actual lawyers I personally, were? Tim, if you know anything about mm -hmm. me, I'm not afraid to speak up. And I would like to challenge that because that yeah. that was not signed off by anybody that I know represents the Democrats. Uh, we are a very open and party. That's why Bernie could run. That's why Lincoln Chafee could run in our primary. They were not Democrats when they decided to run. They became Democrats. They joined the party and they ran under our banner. Sidney Hoyer, he admits that's what they do. I don't know if they're still smoke in that room because there's probably no smoking sign somewhere, but they're still going back rooms and make, de make decisions about who gets to be the nominee. Folks, I'm not telling you this. I'm not guessing this. This ain't a conspiracy theory. This is all on tape. All of it. It's exclusively at The Intercept. I listened to the tape. It is cringeworthy. But if you throw a beat under it, man, it's like a gangster joint. Listen here, see? Listen, hey, 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 hey. Tillman, come here, you kaboom. Come here, you kaboom, boom. You, you want to run? Listen, listen, you crazy kid. You like your feet. What do you mean do I like my feet? Do you do you like your feet? Sure you like your feet. You like walking, don't you? You love your kids. Be a shame if you know if you know, this is hypothetical. Well, God forbid, God forbid something were to, you know happened to their father you know it's it i'm trying i encourage you to go to the intercept.com these stories are there listen to the audio i dim exit it for a reason i didn't dim exit for the money as a commentator with a family, independent, not a part of a network, no salary. <sighs> the financial stability. Because let's face it, man, my viewers are poor. Come on, you guys are working people. You're poor, just like me, you know? I want you to know I didn't exit it because of this shit. I want you to know I didn't start off on YouTube like this. But the more I found out, the more I discovered I had no choice. I don't rail on Democrats because I want to be edgy. I don't, I don't, beat up on the DNC, the DCCC, or the Democratic Party because I have nothing better to do. I do it because they are corrupt sons of bitches. And I'm not saying the Republican Party doesn't do similar things. I'm not saying that. But I know that the DNC does these things.
go to the go to the intercept. Read this for yourself. A country deserves better. All right. if people are worried about the same things the media is worried about. I think people worry about jobs and health care and child care and, Isn't that what and the really weather. Matters? That's what I thought. That's what really That's what matters. I, I